Today, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about enrolling. And I want to break this up a little bit because enrolling, it kind of feels like if we could just get that down, there would be some magic in our businesses, right? And this is the thing that a lot of people really uh, gain some nervousness and maybe some fear around is the enrolling and how to have those conversations. So I want to break this down into three different areas for you. And then in each area, I'm going to give three tips to go along with it. So there's more to enrolling than just getting someone to sign up. We want both customers and consultants in order to build our businesses. We have to enroll people in order to build these businesses. And the first area that we're going to talk about isn't necessarily the things you need to do with someone else. There are more things you need to do to prepare yourself to go out and start talking to people. So the first topic that we're going to cover is mindset. You know, where is your mindset? The first tip here is asking yourself, how are you showing up to these conversations? How are you, what energy are you bringing into the conversation with the person that you're ho hoping to enroll? Are you saying things to yourself like, oh my gosh, I don't know how this is going to go. I'm so nervous. I, I don't know what to say. I don't know if I have this right. If that's the conversation you're having with yourself, that is going to come across to the other person in some way. They're going to feel that. I'm a very uh, energetic person feeling person. Like I, I feel, I tell people often, I don't know what you're thinking, but I can sense how you're feeling. Like you just, people walk in a room. This is why I joined Life Vantage. I walked into the convention space and three steps in and stopped dead in my tracks and thought, whoa, what is this energy? Like this, you can't fake this stuff. This is real. And I was so curious that it kept me in and kept me showing up to events because I was I was amazed at the energy of this business or of this company. Same thing here. How you're showing up, the energy that you're carrying with you is going to impact the people that you're talking to. Interesting fact, fear and joy are the same chemical reaction in our body. It's the same chemical release in our body. It's the difference is the story we're telling. Are we telling ourselves this reaction is fear-based or are we telling ourselves this is joy? It doesn't mean to ignore the fear or when you're nervous, don't ignore that. But find a way to go into your mind and rephrase what you're saying so you can use it to your advantage. Okay, so how you're even preparing, how you're showing up is so important. How you're showing up, what you're saying. The next one, this is really important for you to do ahead of time so that you, again, as you're preparing yourself mentally on how you're going to show up for the conversation, you also, tip two, are going to prepare yourself by detaching from the outcome. You are going to walk into this conversation not having an attachment to what happens next, not having an attachment or an expectation of what their answer is going to be to you. If you can mentally prepare yourself ahead of time for that, then when the conversation happens and when someone says, thanks, no thanks, it doesn't feel so personal. It doesn't feel like such a blow because you're not attached to it. I want you to think about yourself. And when people have approached you and people have said, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever, you should do it. I'm guessing that not every time somebody has offered something to you that you have said yes to it, right? People offer things all the time. You don't say yes to everything. And I'm guessing it's not personal to that person. Maybe you're just not in the space. Maybe it's not the right time. Maybe you have some other things going on that you need to focus on and this can't be your focus. Putting yourself in that position, just remembering when somebody offers something to you and you said, no, thank you. It wasn't personal. It wasn't that person. You don't want that person to feel bad because you said, no, you're just not ready. You're just not able at that time. Put yourself in that place. Prepare yourself to release that expectation. All right. Mindset tip three. This one is a big one. And you, if you've been around this industry for a while, I'm, I know you've heard this before. And if you haven't, you will definitely be hearing this as you continue your time here. Go for no. Go for no. We all start in the same place. We all start with not 
knowing the language, not knowing the verbiage, having to practice, having to practice how it comes out naturally for us. As you're starting, as you're re-engaging your business, you are, you're starting something new, go for no. That means you're practicing. And that practice is eventually going to lead you to a yes. And along with go for no, I want you to think about it as a celebration. Because every no you get means that you've put yourself out there. You have faced your nerves. You faced some fears. You have practiced. Celebrate those things. Now, whether you are doing this for yourself or maybe you have a team, you can celebrate no's for yourself and with your team. The other part of this is really begin to create a culture of celebrating all the little things. You just don't go from starting to EC1. It, do it doesn't happen. Even when you see this happening, right? Like there's there are people who join companies and they go to the top really fast because they've had experience in other businesses and other industries and other companies. You have to practice this. And it's all the little steps you take that get you to the big moment. You don't just get to show up and be there. So celebrate those small steps. So if last week you spoke to two people and this week you spoke to four people, celebrate that. That's one more person that you are two more people that you talked to that you didn't do last week. It may sound silly. It may sound trivial. But I promise you, as you begin to build a culture of celebration, it helps take that pressure of enrolling. It takes the pressure off and it allows you to have a little bit more fun with it. It allows you to show up in a different way. Okay, that's mindset. The next one is showing up. Showing up to events. How does showing up to events help us with enrolling? It, has, it plays such a big part in enrolling in these three ways. Number one, when you're showing up to events, trainings, like trainings like this, whether it's conventions or opportunity meetings, when you show up and you hear different people say the same, maybe the same thing or similar things, but they come from different people, there's going to be a time that you're going to hear something in a little bit different of a way that is going to click for you and it's going to make more sense. Or you could be the leader of your team and you could be repeating these things constantly and they go listen to somebody else speak and they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. And you're like, I have been saying that. How did you not hear it? They heard it in a different way from someone else. That's why showing up to these events and the trainings are so important because you never know what's going to click for somebody at what time. The other reason to show up for events and how it affects your enrolling is as you show up, you're going to continue or you're going to begin to hear things being repeated over and over and over. There is no reason that you join this industry and try to reinvent the wheel. It's out there. What to do, how to do it, different ways to do it. It's all out there. So as you're learning, as you're showing up, as you're engaging in, at events, it is going to help you hear these things and help you say, oh, wait a second. They keep saying that. I'm not doing it. Maybe I need to add this into my business. Maybe this is a piece that's going to help me become a better enroller or more a confident enroller. Maybe this is a piece that I need to add so I feel more comfortable starting conversations with people. If you're not showing up to events, if you're not showing up to trainings, you're not going to hear these things over and over and over again, and you're not going to understand the importance of them. So showing up so you can hear what's being repeated. The last part of this, the last part of why showing up is important is uh, three things. Listening. When we show up and when we listen, we begin to become more familiar with the language, with the verbiage the way to say things, different ways to say things. You show up to listen and absorb what other people are saying. And then the second part of this, take what they're saying and spend some time reflecting on how it feels natural for you to say it, right? I'm not going to take... Uh, so someone that I think is a great example of this is Carrie Dickey. Carrie Dickey is high energy. And when she presents things... It is, I mean, it's all out there, right? 
I love the way Carrie says things and phrases things. But if I showed up and did what Carrie did, people would be like, whoa, lady, that's not that's not who I am. I, I don't show up the same way. So it's not about taking Carrie and trying to replicate Carrie, but it's taking things she's saying and finding the way it fits you in your language, which feels natural for you, so you can go and share it, right? So we listen and we take what we're hearing and then we come back and we reflect on it and we, we reflect in a way that allows us to put our own spin on it. One thing I'll share with you really quick Uh I heard this a while ago at a John Maxwell training and I really loved it. And it's, I recently, it resurfaced in my life. And I think it's very important to remember this part that we don't change because of the events we go to or the things that happen to us. We change because of our reflection of those events. The change doesn't necessarily happen at the convention. The change doesn't necessarily happen um, as you're listening to someone. It happens in those quiet moments afterwards where you're sitting and reflecting with them and you're internalizing it. And I think in our busy world, we don't take enough time to do that. I'm starting on a whole different training. <laughs> this could be a whole training in and of itself, right? Spend some time reflecting on how it feels for you, what feels good and comfortable for you, because that's going to help show you the way to make enrolling more natural for you. And then the last part of this, we listen, we reflect, we find our words. The only way we actually can enroll through this is then by applying it. We have to take the action. We have to go out there and start the conversations. We can, we can do all the mindset work. I can be as prepared as I want to be. I can do my power stances and I can be ready and I can practice it in the mirror. If I'm not doing this with other people, I'm not going to enroll anyone. Right. So you need to take what you're learning and you need to be able to apply it, which leads me to the third tip of action. What actual action can help you with enrolling? The first one, I, um, and this one's important. I asked some of the people that Ashlyn mentioned on our team who are super enrollers and other people within the company. I just I wanted to know people who are good at enrolling what their top three tips would be. Every single one of them said, build trust, connection, and rapport. Every single person who is a master enroller talks about the importance of building trust and rapport and connection with the people they're reaching out to. And that doesn't mean they're only talking to them one time. We have been, as Ashlyn said, with this company for over eight years now. And we have people reaching out to us eight years later saying, okay, now, I've, now I'm interested in hearing because we've kept connection with them. And building trust and rapport does not mean that you're only talking about life vantage with them. Don't just be that person that the only time they hear from you, you're only talking about the business. Building trust and rapport, people want to know that you care about them. Again, Put yourself in this situation. When someone has reached out to you about an opportunity and that's all they talk about and it's all they keep putting at you, how does that feel? How does that make you feel? But when someone reaches out and says, hey, I just saw you were on vacation with your family. How was it? Looked like you had a great time. Would love to hear about it. There's a moment and there's an opportunity to build a connection with somebody. So make sure that your action is not always, it's not necessarily always focused on life vantage. It's not just the products or the opportunity. It's the connection you're building as a person. The next part with action, this one came up often um, with the people I spoke to as well. Ask open-ended questions. Find a way as you engage in the conversation and the opportunity and the products, find a way to leave open-ended questions on the table. Right. Um, one way that we that we did this is I would reach. I had a friend who I reached out to and uh, talked about the products and she would say, thank you. I'm not interested at this time. So I would always follow up and say, OK, I get it. Would you mind in three months if I followed up with you again? Would that be OK? She didn't even need to respond necessarily. She said, yes, absolutely. So every three months, I just touched back, touched back in with her. Or I had another prospect who um, 
wanted to enroll because she had network marketing experience, right? That's exciting. She wasn't interested in the products. When collagen came out, said, hey, well, first, let me back up. I jump ahead. With the other products, I she said, thanks, no thanks. And I said, okay, great. Thank you for letting me know. When Life Vantage comes out with a new product, do you mind if I just reach out to you? Yep, no problem. I went through three rounds of new products coming out. Not interested in any of them. Collagen came out. That was something she was interested in. Different conversation. So if I wouldn't have asked that open-ended question at the very start of our conversations, I would have never, probably I would have never reached out to her again because she kept telling me no, no, no. Those open-ended questions allow for the conversation to continue. Okay, action. So we talk about creating connection and trust, which can happen through open-ended questions and it keeping engaged with them. And then the third one on action is, again, something I'm sure you have all heard before. Follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. The fortune is in the follow-up. This, by far is probably the most important thing you can offer yourself in doing an action when it comes to enrolling. You can Google statistics and they are going to tell you that it's so much percent sign up on the first touch and so many pe percentage of people sign up on the second and third and fourth and 12th. The fortune is in the follow-up. This is essential to enrolling. And it, it follows along with building trust and connection, asking open-ended questions, which give you the opportunity to keep following up with your prospects. We have uh, so many stories, and I know I know you've heard them too. I, as I told you, we've been in for eight years. We have talked to people for eight years about this. And only now have they said, now I would like to hear more about your business. Hey, some things have changed in my life. I would like to hear about making some extra money on the side. Can you tell me about what you what you guys are doing? Follow up. And again, I'm not we are not following up only about life advantage. Sometimes it again, it's it's hey, I saw on social media that you were doing this or that you had a family reunion. I hope you had a great time. That's a follow up. That's a touch. So make sure that you are continuing with those follow-ups. All right, you guys, I don't even know what time I'm at. If I've gone over, if I should keep talking, I don't know. So I will stop there and see if there's anything you guys want to add or any questions. That was amazing. I, In fact, you're going to laugh at me. And I knew that you wouldn't see it till after we were done. But I sent you a text as you were talking and I'm like, you're awesome. Just how organized and simple you made it. Um, that was so, so awesome. And I love your open-ended question uh, tip. That is huge, right? Because like you said, had you not done those open-ended questions, you probably just wouldn't have kept trying because you got a no and you would have been done. I got four, four yeah. no's. And so I love that. Um, so many like, I don't know what you do. So nuggets yeah i want to ask this question so you talk about mindset right and showing up everybody's everybody shows up in a different way how do you what what would you suggest like starting your day how do you get in that mindset how do you get from from the moment you wake up what are some of those things that might help you get in the right mindset or in that right frame of mind if you're planning your week out month out day out what are some of those tips that you might have that would, would help somebody that's maybe like, hey, cool, I've, I've been in a nine to five. I just show up. I do my job this. Now I've got to plan this out. What mindset do I need to shift to of I'm my own I'm my own boss. I need to start get this going. Oh, my gosh, Gentry, there are like 10 things in there. That question. Um, <laughs> again, this could be a complete training in and of itself. The best thing I can offer, um, I'll offer a couple specific tools in a second. But the the best thing I'm that I can offer um, to what you said is to begin to reflect on who you are and how you tick. Because I've done the uh I've tried I am not a routine person. I mean I have tried so many times to set myself up to from eight to nine, I'm gonna do this and then I schedule a break. And I can follow it for maybe two weeks if I'm lucky and it drives me bananas. 
knowing that about myself helps me not set myself up to fail anymore in that way. Right? So the best thing we can do is learn about ourselves. What makes us tick? And you may, you're probably going to have to try many different things. And depending on the season of life you're in, right? It, just what works right now may not work a year from now. What you tried that didn't work today may be the thing you bring back in a year from now that is going to work. So learning what, what motivates you and what drives you. Um, specifically for me, something that I do is when I wake up in the morning, I set an intention for my day. I am, as I said, I, energy is something that I feel very much between people. And so my intentions are usually focused around feelings. How do I want to feel today? Because I'm somebody too, when I set goals, I have to be really careful because I get very specific. And then I create the subconscious expectations of how I think they should come to be. And then when they don't, I get disappointed and hard on myself. So instead of focus on a very specific behavior or expectation, I focus on a feeling and then I practiced enough at this that I can follow the things through my day that help add to that feeling. Um, I don't know that that is going to resonate with everybody, but for any empaths out there or any feelers, that's going to really resonate. If that doesn't resonate, then I would start your day by just kind of making a mental checklist of what are the things that I know have to get done and put them at the top, do them right away. So then they're done and off the table. Love that. No, thank you. That's one of those things that, that, like you said, it's a very, there's a lot of little things that can kind of take place and everybody's a little bit different, but I love that you said finding out what works for you and trying, like you've got to do the do to yes. figure it out. Like that's, that's what it comes down to. So no, thank yeah. you for answering that. All of this, all of these things, right? So great. Now we talked about mindset and you know that I need to set my mindset before I go talk to someone. If you don't actually practice that, if you just think it, but don't do it, it's not the same thing. This is why reflection becomes such an important part of our own personal experiences, because it allows us to say that works, that doesn't work. And then we can begin to make changes based on that, rather than listening to all this outside noise saying, this is how you should show up. Now you begin to make those changes based off of who you are and what you need. But you follow, I mean, getting to know yourself, right? How would I know that I don't like onions? I had to try onions, right? That's yes. the kind of thing. And so I love, I love that uh, getting to know yourself so that you know what makes you tick, you know, what motivates you, things like that. I think that's excellent advice. Um, well, Christy, thank you so, so much for helping us get into the right frame of mind as we close out the month. You guys, we're at July 30th. Tomorrow is July 31st, the last day of the month. And so take uh, this training, listen to it, uh, use it and apply it to end of month. But again, we are not treating the beginning and end of months like the end of a sentence, right? We are continuing on. And so listening to her, maybe going back, listening to this training again and picking it apart for the beginning of the month of August, right? So thank you again, Christy, so much for your knowledge, for your training, and for taking the time to present to all of us. And thank you for asking. It was an honor. Yes, yes. Happy end of month, uh, Activation Nation. And we'll talk to you soon. See you guys. Bye.